What's up everyone? In this video, I want to talk about market structure and looking at the larger picture, whether we're talking about equities, whether we're talking about the S&P 500. It's very important to zoom out, look at the bigger picture to gain not only market context, but also market structure, which is vital with any strategy that you use. You must understand the structure of the market. And in this video, I'm going to break down some trades that we took in my Discord community, some trades that I took, along with how we could use market structure in these examples to understand this and implement it in trades that we're going to take in the future. Before we get into it, I recommend following me on Instagram at Investitrade. I'll post a link in the description below if you want to follow it. I post daily trading recaps on here, along with very good trading tips and tricks that I guarantee you're not going to find anywhere else. There's some very good information on here and you're definitely missing out if you're not following it. But now let's get right into the video. To understand this setup a little bit better, I first want to go over the levels. I post these every single day in my Discord, setups I'm watching, levels I'm looking out for, and potential trading scenarios. It is only available for Trade course members. So to understand the context and the levels, what we were watching for was... Scenario number one was as long as we could hold above 3703 on pullbacks, I'm going to be open to playing longs, targeting 3811 supply. However, we may find some resistance around 377 slash 3783 first. It's very important to use intraday clues and reading the tape to pinpoint an entry with defined risk. So how I look at it, and I've said this in all my videos, is I use supply and demand zones to tell me which way the market's going and where I'm looking to trade. It's my where component, and I use price and volume to tell me when and why to enter each trade. So these are our levels, and we just must use the tape in this scenario because we really didn't have a demand zone close, and everything was leaning towards the bull side. I want to identify strong volume early on at the bell, as strong aggressive buyers hitting the offer should help. Now why I came up with this plan and why I wanted to watch what I did was it was very, very simple. So just to, just to go over the past few days, last Wednesday we had the FOMC meeting, as you could tell by this very large uh, move right here, where we hit supply and then the market started to sell off. This sell off created supply, whereas Thursday and Friday of last week, we were in a very tight two-day balance. Now, this at one point was a supply zone. So if I remove this, I'll save as default, and make a supply zone in this area, I'm just going to draw it like this for now. Uh, this at one point was a supply zone. And every time we hit this 3703 area, if you were following me on Instagram, I actually posted this before the market even hit it. And it gave a nice setup for those following me on Instagram. Uh, on Friday, but we hit this zone and every time we hit it, we failed. Now, the problem with this was we were also above this 3659, 3648 demand zone, whereas from the pre market plan on Friday, pull this up here, um, we were watching for this 3659, 3648 demand to hold while below 3703 supply. I was watching this to be tough resistance. And the market may have a hard time getting above. That's very key because this is going to go into the setup that we took on Tuesday. So 3703 was supply and it was going to be very tough resistance that we're going to have a hard time getting above. So this was Thursday, Friday of last week. This is what I mean by market structure. So essentially the market in a two day period has consolidated in a tight range where we basically, I call it balance, where we're buyers and sellers are agreeing on price. The market isn't attracting new participants to the upside and moves to the downside are getting bought up by buyers at demand where rallies are getting sold inside of supply. If I go to a smaller time frame, such as a, I don't know, five minute, I mean, you're going to see a very tight congested area where three day period, Thursday, Friday, and the, and the market was closed on Monday, but futures still traded. We were in a very tight range where we developed tons of structure, tons of volume, and tons of agreements on price between buyers and sellers. The market is in balance. So what I say is, is the move out of balance, whether we're talking about a higher time frame balance, such as, let me pull this up here. Um, if you've seen my last couple videos, 
two weeks ago, the market was in a higher time frame balance. What I mean by that is before the bigger move in a seven day period, we consolidated in a very tight range. As you can see where I'm hovering over my cursor here. So this is the same thing I'm describing about the past two days, depending on when you're watching this video uh, of Thursday and Friday of the week of June, I want to say 17th and 16th. But back in the start of June for seven days, we consolidated and the market was balanced. Now look at happen what happens when the market moves out of balance. This gives us context and this gives us structure. When the market moves out of balance and the participant which takes us out of balance is showing initiative and is showing more interest at those prices, that's when we're going to get continuation. So the market essentially broke out of balance from a seven day period. We don't see this very often, seven days or eight days broke out of balance. And then that's when we got our crazy three day, four day sell off to the downside. The move out of balance usually is a very larger move. It also gives us structure to come up with quality setups. If you were watching my videos back in this week, the, set, the, the best setups were shorting supply and longing demand. Once the one zone start to not work out anymore, that's when we got our continuation. And the same thing is going to happen uh, to start this week. So now going back to this week, this is a five minute chart now. As you could tell, let me pull up the charts here. Again, three day balance. What I mean by structure is you could look at market profile. You could look at volume profile. I don't use any of that right now. I'm strictly using the chart. I could read a volume profile by looking at what the chart's doing and looking at the time and sales and the level two. I could look at exactly where the highest volume is. And I know that this was a very high volume area where we built structure for the move out of this area to be valid. Now, this is going to make sense right now because what I liked about this setup and why I watched it was it was a no brainer to come up with a bullish scenario today. So I'm going to actually go back here. Uh, this is, this is a green box. So act like this pink zone right here is a green one. And why I put this in the pre-market plan today, I'm going to pull up the plan again. As long as we could hold above 3703, I want to play longs targeting the 3811 supply. However, we may find resistance at 377, 3783 first. Those are my levels. And really what I liked about it was the market provided this structure last week. And today on Tuesday, during the overnight session, we consolidated and buyers accepted value at higher prices and at the top of balance. What I mean by this is we were creating demand inside of a key supply zone, which was this 3703 area. So not only were we creating demand, buyers were finding value at this zone, we got above it, and the market was opening up higher and we were gapping up following a holiday weekend. So a lot of things right now, without even looking at any other equities, which I'm gonna show you in a few seconds here, uh, a lot of things are leaning to the bull side. Before the market opened up, we had that, and this is my wear component. Now, as an intraday trader, I must figure out my when component and when I should open up this trade. In the past two days, our structure was, other than supply at the high and demand at the lows, we were gonna remain in balance and no bigger move was gonna come inside. Now, why we got continuation on this day and really what set it off was market context. So that was structure. Now we have market context. This is where I look at other equities to gauge market direction. The first thing we were looking for was Apple at the 134.50 slash 80 level for price to get above and stay above, which should help ES and NQ bulls. The market opened up, very heavy buying pressure, expansion candles to the upside above our 134.50 area, which helped aid ES and NQ to rally today. We also had another setup like Amazon. Pull up Discord again here. Amazon, perfect setup. We took this on Friday. It bounced off of our support level. So go. I'll go to a five minute chart now. Amazon bounced off our support level two different times, broke above our key level on Friday, very heavy volume. Key level acted as resistance at 104.50 and then we hit our 106.50 target in the day. Now today, I said same thing. 
I'm watching for some continuation here on Amazon above the 109 level. If we can get above with strong interest, it sets up for a big rally in my opinion, and it can help support the, yeah, the uh, S&P 500 and the NASDAQ bulls. So what did Amazon do? Opened up, strong buying volume at the gate, back above 109, pulled back, held 109 on pullbacks, and then continued up. Because of these two setups, along with Tesla, now to be honest with you, I really didn't have a set in stone Tesla plan. Um, what we were watching for was on Friday, pull this up here. Uh, on Friday, we were watching a break above 646, and then once above 684, we could hit 700. If this happened today, same thing, strong volume out the gate, above our key level, and hit our target. The target acted as support, pulled back, held it, and then rallied with volume starting to increase. So we had Tesla, we had Apple, and we had Amazon, three major market-leading equities. This is where market context is important to help us with the direction of the S&P 500. So see how I'm kind of putting all the pieces together? We had demand forming on the S&P. We got above the previous balance range. We were consolidating, creating demand inside, and finding value from buyers at higher prices. That's on the S&P. Now we have market-leading equities above our key levels. If market-leading equities are above our key levels, breaking above supply, bouncing off demand, and rallying, that's just going to help support the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ because we had the similar NASDAQ plan. It's going to help them rally. It's going to give it more fuel to the fire. It's like stopping at a gas station. One gas station's out of fuel. Maybe market-leading equities not rallying. Whereas one gas station is full of fuel, and the full of fuel is the equities providing that fuel because they're rallying, supporting what we want. And what we want is a strong S&P 500 to support our thesis with the structure. So now we have that. I also want to pull up something that was very interesting on the tape. Remember what I said earlier about the when component? This is what I mean by using price and volume and especially reading the tape to give you key and important signs with what the market's going to do and the participation between buyers and sellers. Directly at the open, these times are in central. This was actually a screenshot that a member posted in the Discord. Um, I only have what it looked like on Bookmap. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, but directly at the open, 9.30 Eastern, 9.32 Eastern, there were a ton of trades at the offer or above the offer for decent size. What this says is buyers are extremely aggressive and if we have everything that I've explained so far in this video leading to the bull side, and now the tape intraday is leaning towards the bull side saying, hey, bulls are active, bulls are buying, bulls are showing interest. Let's trade on the same side of these bulls. So very aggressive prints coming through on the tape. And what it looked like on book map, um, every green dot is an aggressive market buy order. And for the first 10 minutes, 15 minutes, uh, you could just see how the tape was very heavy leaning towards the aggressive bull side. Dips were getting bought up. Bids were stepping in. And very, very aggressive, heavy size trades hitting the offer. So that is showing very aggressive bu uh, buyer participants present in the market. This is good enough confirmation to get the market long. And I really wish I could sit here and say I took this trade. I had an order for very large size, larger than normal than I would have traded. Um... And I did not get filled. I had a limit order and missed it by about two points. And by the time I wanted to re-enter, the market was already up seven points from my entry. And at that point, I felt like it was a chase. And I could not enter because my risk to reward was a little skewed. And in hindsight, it would have worked out if I did chase the market. But I don't recommend it. I've got burnt many times chasing. So I learned my lesson. I'd rather miss out on the setup if I did not get my fill. And it's very upsetting, but I know a bunch of members in the Discord capitalized on the setup. So that makes me feel a little bit better. But my size was very large, actually very large to a point that I wasn't so comfortable market ordering in, which is why I had a limit. And then the thing just kept going up, going up. And if I didn't get filled, so my order was at 945, right when we looked like this. I liked how, let's see if we could zoom in a little bit here. Uh, I liked how we were consolidating Try to get my screen, my face not in it. Um, I liked how we were consolidating here. As we were moving up, volume was drying out. See how volume was getting lower? And then at this point at 935, 
more aggressive buyers kept coming in through the high and I wanted to get long at 37.42, stop loss below 37.38. I was risking about four points to make 30 points, extremely good risk to reward, which is why I went heavy size. I knew everything lined up and in hindsight, I should have chased this move. But like I said, I've gotten burnt many times and I don't recommend chasing a move if you miss your entry. You could always re-enter, but definitely got to my head a little bit. I should have maybe looked to re-enter when we created this structure right here because this structure is going to actually play an important role uh, a little later on in the day. So then the market rallied. We hit our 3777 target right according to the pre-market plan. And then we pulled back. So now think of the structure that I just said from the larger time frame picture, zooming out and looking at the bigger one. From an intraday perspective, this right here created structure in the market intraday. We have value forming here. This was an area where high volume was created. Buyers and sellers agreed on price before buyers took the initiative and then rallied price. Look what happened intraday. Market pulled back off the supply and hit it. Only problem with this was volume wasn't very heavy. There wasn't a lot of volatility and I wasn't comfortable playing a pullback into this. Then we hit supply again, formed the wedge, eventually broke out of that wedge and then failed at that 373 target. I mean, the levels worked out perfectly. It definitely is a good feeling. You know, the analysis was correct, but my execution definitely lacked today, but there will always be another setup. The market's going to be here. And I know my skill with technical analysis and price and volume is top notch. So I know when I see my next setup, I'm going to take it and execute flawlessly because I learned a lot from this setup and a lot from this trade. And I hope you all did as well. Now, this is why you must wait for your setups because the following day, straight from the pre-market plan, I missed the setup the day prior. Now on Wednesday, June 22nd, I took a solid setup, over 70% return on my last exits, following a simple plan and looking for structure in the market, although we did not have it pre-market. Now from the pre-market plan, I know a bunch of members absolutely killed this setup. Uh, the S&P 500, not much structure as we had yesterday, as we're pulling back into the 3703 and a quarter level. This is key for me today. So that same level we were watching yesterday, I'm going to maximize this and just zoom out a little bit. That same 3703 level, that price we were watching to hold above yesterday, came back. We pulled back overnight and we gave up all of the gains from yesterday's rally and basically the whole overnight uh, sessions rally. So we were opening up right near this 3703 area and we really didn't have any structure before the market opened up other than I wanted buyers to defend this 3703 area. So then in the pre-market plan, I said, as long as we could hold 3703 and a quarter, the market may attempt to rally and test that 3770 target from yesterday. We do have a small supply at 3733 that if we hold the buyer zone at 3703, test 3733, which is the supply zone right here, it's likely to trade 3770. So didn't have the best structure prior to the market opened up. And then the market opened up and we got a very clean rally. Or actually, before I posted the plan, the market didn't test 3703. This is why I said there wasn't much structure because I honestly didn't expect 3703 to hold. But we did pull back into it. Buying volume came out of 3703. Let me zoom in a little bit here. You can see buying volume came in as we did hit this zone. And then the market rallied from that. And as we opened up, we came into 3733. Again, this is why it's vital to play levels and remove your bias from the market. The zones are extremely, extremely powerful. As you could tell, the plans are very accurate. If we could remove our emotions from thinking something is going to happen and we just trade what the market gives us, it's not going to give us what we want all the time. That's why we manage and protect our risk. But when it does give us what we want and we do perceive the opportunity, that's when we put a trade on and manage our risk because our edge is present. So I said, if we test, if we bounce 3703, test 3733 and get above it, 3770 is likely to trade. Now in the intraday commentary tab, this is basically where I update my thought process throughout the day and what I'm watching. At 940, I said, as long as we consolidate between 3735 and 25, we're gonna go attempt the 3770 level. And this was our trigger to get in longs. So go into a one minute chart. Why I entered this trade was we had other equities. Let me pull up Tesla over here. Tesla from the pre-market plan as well. 
bounced off of this demand zone and had a clean rally. So if you trade Tesla, this was a beautiful setup. 33 million shares traded today compared to a daily average of 32 million. So a million over average. Bounced off demand, retested it. Nice buying volume and a strong rally. I saw that rallying and I also saw same thing from yesterday, remember? Look at this beautiful rally on Amazon. Held and got above 106.50 and then rallied above our 109 level. These two pieces of information along with the market strong buying pressure. And if we were watching the tape, again, I can only show you book map because I, I don't have the replay of the tape. Um, why I posted, I wanted 3735 to hold to slash 3250 was from these large buyers earlier on with aggressive buying coming in. If the market consolidated here and we found value at higher prices, that's attracting participants as the market's moving higher and as value moves higher, that's basically buyers agreeing that price is valuable at higher prices. And this is going to spark some interest. So what I did was I waited for a pullback. I got long at 936. I posted my fills in the discord. If you want to go back and see them 936, I got long. My stop loss for this trade was 3725, which was the low right here where my cursor's at. I was risking about seven points and my target was 3776. Oh, which in this case was 35 points away. So very, very good risk to reward. I got on a reversal to the downside because I saw bids defending their position on the tape. As the market came down, bids defended it. And as soon as I saw that at 936, I did get long. Then the market started pushing up. We consolidated. And from the intraday commentary tab, this is not to show you how accurate it is. This is to show you the importance of the levels. We held 3725. And held above 3735. When we got above that, look at the volume that started coming in. And then the market broke out. And we also had PAL speaking. And then this was just a stress free trade as we continued to move up. I sold some of my position on this pullback. And then I held the rest of my target and got out my full position at 1023 or 1016. Um, so, very stress free trade following the plan. This is more about finding structure intraday. Bounced off the level. Then I wanted to find structure. I wanted to see this consolidation. I wanted to see buyers find value at higher prices to get long with defined risk. Acting like supply or acting like the target was going to be a magnet to price, knowing that if we did create value and we did attract buying volume above, we really had no supply or no resistance that was stopping price from rallying like we did today. And it was a solid setup, probably one of my cleanest setups uh, that I've taken in the past two weeks. And I felt very good because of my missed analysis the day prior. This was essentially the same exact setup, but I capitalized and executed flawlessly on this. And nothing feels better than coming up with a plan, sticking to that plan, following your edge, and the market works out according what to what you expected it to happen. Um, when you plan that and make it stress-free, trading is so much easier. It's it's funner. Don't even think that's a word, but. It's much more enjoyable to trade because there's not as much stress when you put a trade on and you leave your emotions out of it. So that's finding structure in your day. Um, I'm going to end the video on that note. I would appreciate any comments, questions, concerns. Check out the links in the description below. I offer a very in-depth and educational course. It also comes with access to the Discord at no extra charge. I don't have any Discord-only plans as I post these videos. I get tons of questions. The Discord is free and included only for course members. So I'm ending it. Peace out.